Hello. I'd like to tell you about my workplace in the garden at the Campbell School in Aberdeen. Now, we're fortunate enough to have a half-acre walled garden, and half is used for growing vegetables for delivery to the houses, and half is a pick-your-own garden with space for relaxation. There's also a half-acre field, which we use for grazing the school donkeys, and also for growing vegetables in rotation. And all our garden is worked organically. We've got a 72-foot polytunnel, two greenhouses, covered workspace, and most importantly of all, cosy space for tea break. <laughs> so who comes to the garden? Well, in the course of a week, we have 23 students aged 13 to 20. They have a very wide ability range. Uh, many are within the autistic spectrum. Uh, about half of them have no speech or very little speech. On the other hand, we have somebody who comes every day on his motorbike. And the sessions vary from three quarters of an hour to a whole day, and from once a week to every morning. And I have one part-time helper and 16 different support work workers. So a very complicated weekly timetable. So why do they come to the garden? Well, it's not to learn to be gardeners, because most of our students will never attain paid employment. And as we know, there are very few gardening jobs out there. And it's trendier than it used to be, but still for most teenagers, being a gardener is not very cool. So if gardening's not cool, how do you get them to come? Well, by being in an environment that's friendly, non-pressurized, relaxed, informal, and fun, with lots of excruciatingly bad jokes. And we found that big orange machines are more of a carrot than, well, big orange carrots. <laughs> and we have other incentives as well. So what is it we're trying to achieve in the garden? Well, I think one of our most important things is teaching life and social skills. Things like teamwork, independence, concentration, punctuality, and tea break skills. Now, by tea break skills, I don't mean putting the kettle on, but I mean staying for half an hour in the bothy without falling out with your mates. Supporting the classroom curriculum is also very important. Um, gardening is in the Steiner curriculum, but it also fits very well in the curriculum for excellence. And it relates very clearly to other subjects, obvious ones like botany and zoology, but also things like physics. One of my students told me that a wheelbarrow is a very good lever. And it provides respite from the classroom. Part of the morning spent in the garden hopefully means that the rest of the morning in the classroom goes better. And many of our students learn better in an outdoor environment than in the classroom. Encouraging healthy eating. Uh, we can't be self-sufficient. Our walled garden was built 100 years ago to provide food for the one family in the big house. There are now 100 people in the school sitting down for lunch, so we can't manage to feed them. But, as we said before, if students are more likely to eat healthily if they've been involved in growing the food themselves. And this was part of our salad delivery last week. And the garden's helping the school to become an eco-school, the three R's. We're reducing food miles and packaging through growing at least a bit of our own food. We're reusing plastic bottles, plastic bags, egg cartons. We're recycling food waste, shredded paper from the office, garden waste, and paper towels. And we're using all the leaves that fall off the trees in the school grounds. But our most important aim is that students and co-workers coming to the garden should leave more at peace than when they arrive. And they should be happy to come again next time. And we do this by making full use of the therapeutic qualities of the garden. And you could call this laid-back gardening. And there's some examples. <laughs> but what are these therapeutic advantages of the garden? Well, I think the biggest one is space. And I wanted a picture of a chaotic, crowded classroom to contrast this with, but the teacher said he didn't keep those pictures. <laughs> <laughs> I 
And rather than the plants themselves, I think with youngsters, what appeals to them in, in the outdoors is the wider environment, the wind, the views, the sunset, and particularly the wildlife, the things in the garden like the toads, the creepy crawlies. And we're exceptionally fortunate because although we're on the edge of Aberdeen, we have buzzards and red kites flying over the garden almost every day. And of course, as we know, in the garden, there's so many different things to do that it's usually possible to match the activity with the ability, even if, like us, you have a wide range of abilities. And I think particularly important is the gardeners as a therapeutic tool, because in the garden, we're free from at least some of the bureaucracy of the classroom, the IEPs, the targets, the care plans. And we have the opportunity for less intense, non-face-to-face -face interaction in the garden. We're fortunate to have a lot of one-to-one -one settings because of the high use of volunteers we have. And I think gardeners are particularly able to avoid the temptation to control because we know that in the garden, it's the forces of nature, not us, that's in control. And really, gardeners have no excuse not to be more relaxed than stressed teachers and carers because... We're like professional footballers. We're doing for a job what other people have to do for a hobby. But having said that, a lot of work does get done. These are our potatoes in the tool shed being chitted just now. And every single one of those potatoes is going to be planted by a student on manure and compost that have been spread by a student, in furrows made by a student, in a field plowed by a student. The majority will be harvested by students, the rest by me, but they will all, every single one of them, be delivered by students. And this is possible because I think we've managed to create a student-centered garden. We choose what we grow according to the value for the student's program, not for economic reasons or what the cooks are asking for. We're able to grow all year round, although it's not really economic. We have created and been given lots of indoor workspaces. We have the special equipment we need. And we created accessible workspaces, washrooms, and paths. And creating the accessible paths has created opportunities for the students themselves, as we see here. I think Fiona suggested that I told you some of the things that have gone well in the garden, some of the things that have gone less so well. So we'll start with the highs. I think the year-round vegetable delivery. Uh, Mark on the left is using pictorial boards because he can't read. But because of that, he can go off on his own. Now, Lawrence isn't able to go on his own but he is practicing his reading here with the labels. And I'm surprised, looking back, at how uh, much we've been able to involve our students in all the work in the garden. Nearly all the indoor seed sowing is done by students, most of the tractor work, nearly all the compost sieving, and, as I've said, all the deliveries. Um, yeah, for years and years, we haven't bought any compost. We've made our own from leaf mold, from garden waste, uh, worm compost we've made from kitchen waste and shredded paper, and we're fortunate to have manure from our donkeys and from their riding school and the farm on the school's other campus. And these are all dug in or used as a mulch, and they're mixed in various proportions to make our seed and potting mixes. And most importantly, all this provides many opportunities for student involvement. And especially things like sieving, some of our least able students can be fully involved in that. Uh, another high has been our involvement in the recognition of individual achievement in horticulture award with the Calais. And the students get the award on the presentation of a portfolio which demonstrates 80 hours attendance in the garden, uh, partaking in 20 different activities for at least two hours, and achieving three personal goals. And here are some examples of some personal goals. And I'm happy to say that they were all achieved, apart from the last one, <laughs> which wasn't managed. And the advantage of the, of the uh, award scheme for us, I think, has been it's increased the motivation for our students, but also our co-workers. Now, we're jumping on to uh, the downsides. And I... I think one of the biggest problems we've had is the untidiness of the garden. 
And this is partly because of the sheer size and also the other indoor spaces we have to look after. Um, it also has to do with the large number of individuals and groups that uh, come to the garden. There was a lack of time the helpers have to prepare and clear away because they're fully involved in taking the students to and from their other activities. But the biggest problem in the garden is me because I'm just a very untidy person. But uh, this is actually quite serious because an untidy garden has health and safety implications and implications for its value as a therapeutic impulse. So it's something that I, in particular, really have to get to grips with. Uh, we also need to improve our productivity and quality of what we produce. Uh, I think being better organized is a key. I think there's a lot of truth in the saying that the difference between a good gardener and a bad gardener is about two weeks. <laughs> we have to control our pests better. And our biggest problems are caterpillars, slugs and snails, rabbits, and this last year, pigeons. Pigeons are just a real problem at the moment, so we've got to get lots more protection, which is also going to cost money and take time. And keeping on top of the weeds is another huge problem. I'm also hoping in the future to move from being an organic garden to a biodynamic garden, like most of my Campbell colleagues. Uh, but our biggest challenge is how to expand our capacity further to meet the demand for post-school students. Because the school has a falling role which is very worrying financially because we survive on fees from the local authorities. But it does give an opportunity to offer places to students who reach school leaving age who haven't managed to find somewhere fruitful to move on to. And now these students will often have the most complex needs. And very many of them are going to be heading towards the garden. And to finish, I think, uh, it's quite significant that our school has spaces in the classroom, it has spaces in the residential units, it has spaces in the craft workshops, but every year the garden is busier and busier. And I'm absolutely sure that's not down to my skill, and particularly not my bad jokes. But what it is is what we've talked about already, the particular therapeutic benefits of gardening. Well, thank you.